it's Heidi welcome to my channel and today I'm gonna to be doing another thrift flip so I take three items that I find at either a thrift store Salvation Army Goodwill yard sale Habitat for Humanity any of those places and I give them a little bit of a new life sometimes it's a little bit of work sometimes it's a lot of bit of work so let's get started with today's flips okay this is um, verse of the week. I think it, it is. It's a Christian. Like it comes with cards. It's a little clip-on verse of the week. It's got a hanger on it that I picked up at Goodwill for 99 cents. And although it is really cute and I like the style, I'm actually going to be removing those items. I'm going to be removing this. It's just held on with a screw, and I'm going to sand this down a little bit. Hopefully it doesn't mess with the stain much. We'll see. And I just want to do countdown to Christmas. So I just want to keep this basically visually the same, but I want to do a countdown to Christmas. And then for the cards like this, I will be using days. We'll just do countdown days. So we'll do probably from 25. Um, I don't know. I think we're ready for Christmas already. So maybe more than that, but this will become a countdown for Christmas. I will cut something out with my silhouette to put at the top and I will just print out numbers and put them on little cards for the bottom. Okay, that's number one. So once again, this was 99 cents. Now this guy I had my eye on for weeks at our Goodwill. This was $2.99, which I honestly think is really worth $2.99. But I kept going, mm, no, I'll wait, I'll wait, I'll wait. And I did, and so when Red Tag went half off, I snatched this up. I was really excited. I absolutely love the pine cone detailing, if you can see that. And then this is all metal. So my plan is to clean this up, so just wipe it off. And then I'm going to paint this white. And then I want to either, um, use a wet rag to remove some of the raised areas on this, the embossed areas, or I will uh, take some sandpaper. So we'll see if one works better than the other, but this will be white and I think it's just gonna be adorable to put some Christmas items on or even to use for Christmas for tray for food. So this was $1.50 and uh, shouldn't cost anything but paint. And then we have this chair. It's a very basic chair, uh, nothing super special about it, except it's sturdy and easy. This all looks pretty easily removed. There are four screws holding this seat on. And this seat has no cushion whatsoever. It is just a piece of wood. So I'm gonna add a little bit of cushion to it recover it with some cute fabric. I haven't decided on the fabric yet. And then this chair will also get painted. Uh, likely white, maybe charcoal. Not super positive yet which one. And this one I got at a yard sale for two bucks earlier this summer. So this one's been sitting around for a while to get, uh, get new life. So I did like though how easy this was to just take apart. Very straight lines, nothing too intricate. So this should be a pretty quick, especially with my paint sprayer, this should be an easy, quick job. So we have a $2 chair, a $1.50 tray, and a 99 cent countdown Christmas calendar. Stick around to see how it goes. For our first project, we're going to be doing the verse of the week board. The cards that came with it were really cute, but they're not going to work for what I need them to right now. So I'm going to set those to the side for a possible future project. Next, I'm going to take this clip off using my screwdriver, and I'm going to set it to the side so I can later come in and spray paint that. Now I'm going to take fine grit sandpaper in hopes to be able to get this verse of the week word off and unfortunately you can see that it was just down in the ridges too much and I could not get it off so I decided to just go ahead and give the whole box a good sanding and prepare it for paint
Okay, so no, this is not sour cream. I keep my paint that I tend to use on smaller projects in a separate container so I don't have to open my giant latex container every time I wanna do a project. This is also nice for touch-ups and things like that around the house because this is the paint I use on my walls as well. I really like how thick latex paint is and I tend to use it not only on my walls and furniture but on other projects as well. And that's what I'm doing here. So I'm gonna just give the sides and the top one coat. I just did a pretty thick coat so I only needed to coat it once because I knew I was gonna distress this box. I'm going to give this clip two coats with drying time in between of the Toasted Poppy Seed by Kills Chalk Paint. And now I'm going to sand the box down with medium grit sanding block. And it's going to have a really nice distressed look once I'm done. Okay, it's all sanded and it's time to attach the clip back on. I designed a Days Until Christmas that I'm cutting with my silhouette and that's what you see here. And I will cut this out, I will weed it, and then this vinyl will go on the front of the box. Okay, so I've weeded it here, and now I'm putting a transfer paper on top, and I'm just putting pressure on those words so they peel off onto the transfer paper. And there you see that it's now on my transfer paper, so I'm going to be putting the sticky side down so I can place my words exactly where I want them. I usually don't measure things. I tend to eyeball, which sometimes gets me in trouble, but more often than not, I th say that that's one of my strengths is being able to eyeball something pretty even. And then I'm just gonna put some more pressure on that to make sure that it gets good and stuck onto the box. And then I peel the transfer paper away and the vinyl stays on. I found the perfect paper for this project in my stash, but I don't think that this is available for purchase anymore. So what I did was I put a link in the description for somewhere where you can download and make your own in case you wanted to do something similar to what I'm doing. So they're all cut out and now they go on the box. And I was gonna leave this box plain, but once I saw it, I thought it needed a little bit more. So I decided to go ahead and pull out some of my picks. And this boxwood pick that I get from Walmart, I use a lot around my house. And all I did was pull a few sprigs from that. And then I also pulled out this uh, branch, the red berry branch from Dollar Tree. And I'm gonna go ahead and put a little glue, hot glue on the top, and put just a few of those pieces down. So it's really, maybe I don't know eight to ten cents worth of that boxwood when you when you break it down and the same thing for the red berries Now I'm gonna go ahead and just glue those berries on. And I thought it needed just a little something else, so I actually ran into my front yard and pulled these pine cones off one of our pine trees. And I had a little visitor with me. A spider ended up 
must have been in one of the pine cones and I scooped him up and put him outside once I was done gluing these pine cones on. We love all creatures, great and small. And here is the final product. I was pretty pleased with how everything looked. I like the variety in the cards. And this is going to go in a central place in our house so the kids can change it every day and count down to Christmas. So project number two is this beautiful tray. I did give it a really good cleaning, but I didn't think you guys would want to watch that. <laughs> so next I paint it with my Dutch Boy paint and my Wagner Flexio sprayer. And I did give this two coats just because I wanted to get the edges. There were a lot of scalloped edges on this and little cracks and crevices. So I did give it a few coats. So now it's dry and I'm just taking fine grit sandpaper and gently going over those raised areas on the tray because I don't want to overdo it because if I do then I'm just going to have to repaint it if I want to put more back on. So it's easier to take it off lightly than to have to go back and repaint it. And I decided to switch to a sanding block because it was just a little bit easier to manage that way. And I did all the scallops and the handles and the pine cone branches and everything just got a little bit of sanding. And here is the final product. I am really happy. I know I'm sure I say that a lot. I'm really happy with how this turned out. I love the white and just a little bit of the shining silver coming through. It'll be great for a decor tray or if we wanna serve hot cocoa on it. Because of that latex paint, it really holds up just great. For our final project, we have this chair that is orangey yellow wood that is, I'm not a fan of. I really don't like this color. I don't like the vinyl shiny seat. There's no padding in the seat. And the chair's really cute. It just needs a little bit of help. So first I need to remove the seat, which I just do with a screwdriver. Some chairs are more difficult to redo than this. This one was very straightforward and basic, which makes it easier on me as well. I did give this a good scrub down before I painted. And the paint I'm using is the Dutch Boy DuraClean, and I'm using my Wagner Flexio sprayer to paint this. I love having a paint sprayer. I like the freedom of being able to plug this in wherever I want and use it. I know with some of the air compressor sprayers that are cheaper, you have to hook up to an air compressor. And I have one, but I really like being able to plug this in anywhere because it just all, it works on its own. And this chair did get two coats of paint. I flipped it over and painted underneath as well, just to make sure I had everything covered. I got this batting for free at Habitat for Humanity. They were gonna pitch it and I took it. <laughs> so now with the seat, I have to remove all the staples and there are plenty of ways to do that. The way I did it was using just a putty knife, a metal putty knife. It seemed to get in there easier for me and that's just what I decided to use for this project. and I just removed the vinyl, and there was a tiny bit of padding in there, but not really enough to make it substantial. So I'm taking this batting, and please do not think that um, this is an acceptable way to do this. I took the lazy way out, so I folded it so it was four pieces thick. So I cut one long piece and just folded it four times, so I had a four layers of this batting and I tried to cut it with my exacto knife and that ripped so that did not work at all. I ended up tracing it with a sharpie and cutting it out and yes I cut it out all together. It is a little bit wonky and you know 
that's okay. I was starting to lose light outside and I really wanted to get this chair done. So I just did it a little bit quicker, a little bit lazier than I probably should have. But ultimately in the end, it worked out okay. It's not a big deal. But if I were to redo this again or tell you how to do it properly, it would be cut each layer correctly and not just jumble it all together like I did. Now, I was really trying hard to figure out which material I wanted to use. I thought for sure I was gonna want the green, which I absolutely love, but it was such a hard decision. I didn't think it would be that hard of a decision. And of course, I ended up going with my favorite material as of right now, and that is the mustard flower material that I purchased from Hobby Lobby. Now, also, I wanna point out that I absolutely hate the staple gun. It is a, an absolute bear to work with. It is old. I don't know if I'm just not strong enough, but the staples never go in all the way, no matter what material I'm using. So on my Christmas list is an electric staple gun. That is what I'm asking my kids for for Christmas. So I just went kind of crazy with the staples. I even ran out of them. I had to refill it again. And please do not pay attention to how I'm putting this material on. There are correct ways to do it and that is not what I'm doing right now. I should have folded it a little bit differently on those corners. On the second corners I actually did it much better but once again these staples weren't going in. I was frustrated. I wanted to get it done. I was losing light <laughs> so I just kind of threw it on there and it actually ended up working. It didn't turn out as bad as I thought it might, but it was very frustrating. But it was absolutely worth the frustration because now this chair is so cute. I really like the white and the material I ended up going with, and it is just a perfect little chair to sit in the corner when you need an extra seat, and it's actually comfortable to sit in. Pretty happy with the final product. Thanks so much for watching guys and if you like the video please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss out on my future videos.